localizers are ruining video games. Now, I don't mean all translators. Most translators do valuable work translating all sorts of inappropriate content for me to play behind closed doors. Instead, what I'm talking about are creative translators. The translators who call themselves localizers and weaponize their mediocre knowledge of Japanese into a license to ruin video games with their jokes, their spin on stories, and the like. But let me step back for a moment and explain why this bugs me so much. I was playing Ghostwire Tokyo recently. It's an okay game, it feels kind of like uh, Prey with more weeaboo and less casino boo. At some point early in the game, I caught a rather annoying translation uh, fix. Specifically, at one point in the game, an ominous Japanese ghost dude inside of your protagonist's head is asked whether he stole something when he was, you know, not a head ghost. Now, the original language goes as follows. The protagonist says, ka? The head ghost says, Sa do daro na. In its most literal translation, these phrases are as follows. Did you steal it? In response, well, who knows. The official translation is different. The head ghost instead says, All property is theft, kid. Now, this is a small change that doesn't impact too much, but it annoyed me. I felt like the game was lying to me. Some localizer added Marvel-style quippy nonsense to a game that didn't need it, and for an audience that didn't ask for it. Hilariously, the Chinese translation, probably the one that would most expectedly contain communist propaganda, had nothing like that. Instead, the head ghost says, The world belongs to the people. This got me thinking. What in the world happened to the world of translation? I fondly remember the days of true fan translations in the 2000s. The days when some dudes with basic understandings of Japanese would fart out .srt files for Japanese dramas and anime as fast as possible. Even with understandably low expectations, the translation quality these guys made was pretty good. Part of the reason the translation was good was because there was an implied contract between viewer and translator. The translator was doing it for free, and the viewer was placing a lot of faith in the translator to translate accurately. Translators did their best to provide a good product. Viewers didn't expect perfection, and most people were happy with the resulting work product. You can still see this dynamic on Viki, a site for my QT 3.14 Korean dramas that I love because I'm mentally broken. People volunteer their own time to provide free subtitles for various new shows, and in exchange, people praise them for their work and lower their expectations accordingly. It's really cool, and one of the aspects of the internet I truly love. That said, when companies increasingly began to import their own content into the United States and translate it themselves, this contract kind of changed. Money was involved. Fans understandably expected better translations, and companies expected cheap translations. These for-profit translators increasingly began to call themselves localizers, suggesting that their jobs were above and beyond rote translation. The problem is, those jobs were still pretty bargain basement. Good translation talent was mostly already locked up doing technical and legal translation work. So the remaining folks, interested in translating Anime Harem Simulator 2015, weren't the best. In other words, the folks getting A's and B's in Japanese class were already off making bank doing technical and contract translation, so the world of game translation was left to the C and D students, for the most part. It should thus be of no surprise that a lot of the games are being translated terribly, or in manners which introduce annoying little quippy Marvel tier jokes that weren't in the original material. Allow me to provide some examples that you might find on the internet. In The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes, a simple line of dialogue from a character is modified to add a Reddit meme. Such ancient, such ruins. It's unfortunately far from the first time a Zelda game has featured an odd cultural reference that is almost immediately outdated and weird. In Fire Emblem Fates, translators apparently decided to forego translating numerous lines of dialogue to instead make a joke about both characters being stoic. In other words, translators completely ignored the storytelling intent of the original writers to, yet again, make a dumb Marvel tier quippy joke. There are similar dumb changes made to the script in Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. In the house in Fata Morgana, the term Sundire was replaced with fragile male ego, which allegedly took multiple brainstorming sessions for some reason. In Neo, The World Ends With You, a character's dialogue was modified to sound weirdly Valley Girl, replacing a fairly normal exposition with weird slang that, at least in my view, doesn't remotely fit the character. In Making Lovers, references to yakiniku, a Japanese dish, were replaced with references to Korean barbecue, in part because, according to the translator, Japanese people appropriated the concept of barbecue from Korea. In Lunar Silver Star Story, some bland fantasy text is replaced with jokes regarding American candy. In 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, a character's lines are extensively revised to, as far as I can tell, suggest that the character is non-binary or transgender. In Danganronpa V3, a simple joke about a shonen magazine is replaced with some sort of joke about fake news. 
Of course, this sort of nonsense is not relegated purely to for-profit translation. For example, the fan-translated game Tomato Adventure had some drama involving whether a certain line suggested cross-dressing or not. But that's not to say the fan translation world is consistent. You can be hated for accurate translations as well. A Goman 3 fan translator quit after his accurate translation of a Japanese slur into an English slur garnered him a lot of hate. All of these just scratch the surface of the nonsense that's beginning to happen in many video games. For example, I'm not even beginning to cover how these localizers often promote the censoring of content from Japanese games to allegedly appeal to Western morals. I'll probably cover that in the future. So what in the world is going on? I think the problem here is a simple one, and it really goes back to the kind of people who translate content for a living. As I've indicated in a previous video, I used to live in Japan for a while, and at that time I met a lot of what I'd call lifers, the kind of people who plan their entire lives around the ability to speak some Japanese. They often marry some Japanese person, live in Japan if they can, and obsess over dumb crap like sleeping on tatami mats. The thing is, very few of those people are actually very good at Japanese. Despite living and breathing glorious Nippon, most of them are surprisingly bad at Japanese, in no small part because Japanese is extremely difficult to learn. Along those lines, when they happen to live in Japan, most of these folks end up working as dancing monkeys at English schools, basically burning their youthful years teaching kindergartners their ABCs. That's often because it's hard to find gainful employment with nothing but a Japanese degree. Remember, that degree is rarely better than simply growing up in a multi-language household. That said, some of those folks end up lucky. They, for whatever reason, get a safe translation job. They might not be good enough to translate technical materials, but they can be trusted to slowly but surely translate in a banter in video games. For a weeaboo who spent years learning Japanese, that's a pretty sweet gig. But remember, the job these lifers get is still only marginally better than being a dancing monkey. They're probably still going to be locked in some cubicle doing manual translation work all day. They're not doing the sexy game dev stuff or intense translation work, as they're probably not smart enough for either of those gigs. I suspect what these guys do is begin to try to put their fingerprint on translations. They want to add their own jokes and spin, just to make the game feel a little bit more of their own. They create nothing but want to tag along with those that do. It helps that, in some cases, this spin helps cover up their translation ineptitude. In response to this criticism, translators usually say the same thing. They're localizers, and their job is much more complicated than mere translation. They'll often aver to the difficulty of Japanese, how everything is contextual, and how their job is really, really hard. Don't buy this nonsense. You can easily find logical flaws in their reasoning, even if you don't speak a word of Japanese. First, even if we assume that Japanese is a huge complex mess of subtleties and innuendo, at no point do these subtleties and innuendo require the addition of memes, Reddit tier jokes, or the like. In fact, the fact that something is hard to translate does not mean that memes must be introduced to that translation. Second, it is simply incorrect to state that Japanese to English translation introduces a lot of subtleties and problems. After all, a lot of technological and business dealings rely on the translation of material from Japanese to English, and vice versa. Many translation firms exist, and those translation firms often sign legal documents promising the accuracy and validity of their translations. They wouldn't be able to do that if the translation process were that fraught with ambiguity. What those translators often assert as ambiguous is, at least in my mind, often a product of their own weakness with the language. In fact, I suspect that what some translators consider troublesome ambiguity is often intentional subtlety on the part of Japanese developers. That sort of ambiguity is lost on the kind of people who live and breathe flashy Marvel-tier storytelling. Third, and more particular to the world of video games, it simply cannot be the case that Japanese content cannot be faithfully translated in the context of video games. Remember, a plenty of video games have been translated from Japanese to English and vice versa, and many of those games are perfectly fine. It seems appropriate to note that modern translations appear to get wonky and full of nonsense precisely when they are handed to folks like this. That is, you know, the kind of people who put their political leanings and mental illnesses in their Twitter profiles. In fact, some Japanese English translators openly admit to having guideline documents, which they use as a guide to modify elements of the stories they translate. Those aren't published or otherwise available to fans, which tells you a lot about what they probably contain. Fourth, Japanese to English translation is somewhat special in that a lot of fans specifically demand that Japanese culture be left in. In other words, Japanese to English is a unique scenario where meddling is specifically unwanted and fans specifically want Japanese cultural weirdness left in. All of these factors should strongly suggest to you that localizers aren't messing around with their translations due to their desire to be faithful to the original intent of the works they translate. Rather, it's about leaving their own mark on products they originally had nothing to do with. 
Tellingly, these localizers began to absolutely freak out when the game River City Girls Zero was released, because the game featured translation options that allowed players to select between literal or new translations. Those so-called localizers came up with all sorts of inane arguments for why the option was bad, but the reality was quite clear. It exposed them. It made it abundantly clear that their so-called localization choices were subjective, not objective. All of that being said, I feel like I need to be clear here. Not all translation choices re necessarily reflect malice on the part of the translator. For example, there was a bit of controversy regarding the translation of quiz questions in the game Persona 5. In short, it's not particularly clear if it would be fair to quiz Western gamers on Shogi, a Japanese game that virtually none of them would have any familiarity with. There's a decent argument to be made that a Shogi question could be fairly swapped for a chess question just to improve user experience for Western audiences. That said, let's be real. You have to remember your audience. Persona fans want their Japanese crap injected straight into their veins. They'd probably enjoy the shogi questions even if they did require Google. As another example, some translators debate whether terms like sensei should be translated into English or not. Thankfully, this really isn't much of an issue. Even weebs with an extremely limited knowledge of Japanese usually have a passing familiarity with basic Japanese honorifics. As yet another example, many Japanese games feature dumb puns that simply do not translate into English. Substituting them with equivalent English puns is a common strategy to get the point across in translation. That said, the same consideration should be kept in mind. Some of us like the weirdo Japanese nonsense that pops into games from time to time. Keeping in a bad joke written by a good Japanese writer is, at least in my mind, sometimes preferable to keeping a joke written by some weeb translator looking to make his mark on the game. So let's sum this up with a simple concept. Paid translators, and localizers, should stay in their lane. Paid translators should do what they're paid to do. Translate. Not editorialize, not joke, not explain. Translate. To paraphrase the words of J.R.R. Tolkien, that video games are an imaginary world does not give translators any right to remodel them according to their fancy, even if they could in a few months create a new coherent structure which it took the original developers years to work out. The concept of localization and the weird reverence that folks have for paid translators is simply undeserved. Instead, if you're going to praise anyone, praise the free translators. The people doing way better jobs for free on content that you can often enjoy for free. They spend hundreds of hours doing amazing work just so that you can enjoy niche games that literally no one would be caught dead selling. Thanks as always for watching this video. I would love your thoughts in the comments.